Today, Gareth and I are gonna talk about using miniatures at your RPG table, right? And uh, these are practical ways and tips that you can use miniatures effectively in your RPG games. If you're looking for adventure, grab the modules each month to support the channel and play the campaign with your gaming group. You're sure to get hooked on adventure. Do you ever have the feeling that something's watching you? This is where a lot of my game room magic happens, right? I, ha I run my games in here. But one thing that, uh, Gar although Gareth and I are on other sides of the world, one thing we agree on is that miniatures can bring a lot to your game, right? So we're gonna talk about effective ways you can use miniatures in your games. When you take into account that besides the rule books and the dice, the most common thing you're gonna find in the game is then miniatures. So that's why we want to talk about how to get the most out of minis and not just uh, crazy. Buy hero miniatures first because the players are going to want miniatures that represent their characters, their minds, eye of their characters. And they're going to, you're going to want a variety of, of miniatures they can choose from. So if you have these, the character miniatures, then what that means is you can use substitutes and other things for monsters. You don't have to have every single monster. You can use substitute other miniatures and that kind of thing. If you need even tokens, if you need to, but you know, it's not really that fun as a character to have a token for your miniature. So these I think are the most important thing to bring to your, your game table are the character miniatures first. Don't buy minis based on how cool the mini looks, because otherwise you end up with a mini that looks just like you. Say hello to mini me. In all seriousness, it's more about trying to find minis that are going to be the most useful, not necessarily the ones that are going to look the best on your table, especially when you're starting out. Now, of course, if you've got huge piles of money, there's not really going to be a problem, but most of the people in the world you're going to meet do not have huge piles of money. Consider how useful is that mini going to be, or the minis that you're going to purchase. How useful and, and how regularly are going to be, you going to be using them in the game? Otherwise, you end up buying one of these and never using them. Here's my box of uh, you know goblins, hobgoblins, orcs, gnolls, that kind of thing. Now, what I would do is I would focus on the low-level monsters first because you're going to use those the most, right? And some of these higher-level monsters, you may not even you know get to use them until much later, if at all. So really, focus on this kind of stuff first. These kind of trash mobs, right? And then once you get that, then you can start working on the higher-level monsters on that and that kind of thing to add to your collection and uh, fill it out. Now, of course, one of the easiest places to find miniatures is online. You can go to independent companies like Crippled God Foundry, who obviously have partnered with us on some of our modules, and of course, eBay. But not everything is on there, so sometimes you, you need to go further afield. So what are the other things we could do? If you know me, you know how much I love the dollar store, right? You can make tons of monsters from the dollar store. Now here's an elder brain I made, right? It's got styrofoam, a brain mold, and a dead, a skeletal crow that I got from the dollar store, right? And I made this awesome elder brain out of that junk, right? You know, a few bucks worth of materials. So always be looking out for stuff that you can use at the dollar store to make really cool things like this, set pieces that you can throw down and wow your players. Although local game stores are dwindling um, because of the online offerings, uh, we are actually in the golden age of role playing. So kind of, you know, strange. But what you'll also tend to find when you go to local game stores is they will have specific games that they tend to focus on that the owner has curated. They feel this is the game. There's more people typically in that game store that play that game, and that's why that game store will hold that game. So when you're purchasing miniatures from a game store, realize that there's probably a lot of people in that area that actually play that game. So you then have an opportunity to obviously find people to play in games with you through that store. Another great way to get miniatures are through Kickstarters, right? Because they're going to offer you miniatures at a cheaper at a cheaper price than you'd pay retail. And one great value has been the Bones Kickstarters. I've only been in the last couple years. This is the fourth one. I got the third, Bones 3 and Bones 4. But I think they're going to have a Bones 5, so make sure you look out for that. But you pay a fraction of the price for this than you would retails. And you can get tons of miniatures that way. So always be checking out uh, Kickstarters 
use for ways to get miniatures cheaply and less expensive than you would if you just waited for them to come retail. Of course, the disadvantage is you gotta wait for these miniatures to come, but it's well worth the wait and the value you save is just incredible, especially on these Bones miniatures. Of course, my favorite way to acquire miniatures is with board games. That's a pretty good one. Don't mind the tiger. Plenty of cool stuff in this. This game is rubbish, but filled to the brim with kick-ass miniatures. So when you're in the toy store buying your fluffy toys, be sure to pick up a board game or two that have a lot of miniatures. Because oftentimes big box stores buy huge bulk loads of, of board games and then try to get rid of them at a bottom dollar price. And then I'm there to say, take my money. Paper miniatures can be a great option also. Gareth has a nice video showing you how to make these. But uh, yeah, you can make multiples, you can print up as many as you need. They're super cheap to make. Uh, so they do have a lot of advantages. I must say I'm very partial to the 3D miniatures, that's just me. But you know, I if you don't have the budget for those, then paper miniatures can be a great way to go. Very economical, but look good and represent the things you want at the table. You can sculpt your own minis. So this is where you can go to the dollar store and just pick up materials, or you can go to the craft store or art shop or something like that. You can buy clays and foams and the list is endless. This is a hobby all on its own. It's, you know, you can get into that just on its own and that kind of can set itself apart from RPGs. Do realize that this does take a significant amount of time. So you may want to focus on like big boss bad guys, like this thing that Scotty's made. Arr, Scotty Beholder. Arr, arr, arr. Just as Scotty said, with the dollar store and all these sort of things, you have so much at your disposal to create these kind of things. Check out Monster Mashup by Dave O'Gara. That's a great channel for how you can take really cheap little miniatures and blend them together to create other things. 3D printing is another option, right? Really cool. And uh, I, I do a lot of 3D printed miniatures. Here's one I did. Uh, pretty cool stuff. You can find tons of different things online. Print as many as you need for your games. So if you have the chance to get into 3D printing, it's a great part of the hobby that you can print your own miniatures and paint them up. Really fun. Another aspect of miniatures are painting the miniatures, right? And I love to paint miniatures, but I understand not everybody does. And you can buy pre-painted miniatures and that kind of thing. If you use paper miniatures, you don't have to worry about painting them. So it depends how much you want to get involved in your miniature hobby. Some people may want to paint their character miniature, but not paint any other miniatures, not paint all the monsters and that kind of stuff. And like I said, you can buy the pre-painted miniatures, the pre-made miniatures that are already painted, but don't uh, rule out painting them yourself because a little bit of practice, check out a video or two, a little bit of practice, and you can be fairly decent in painting miniatures. It really doesn't take too much skill to be to, to get what I call table ready, right? Now, to get to that expert level, it could take some years of practice, but to get them table ready where they look good on the table, it it's not hard at all, just a few techniques. That's kind of out of the scope of this video, but it's something to consider when you're deciding what miniatures you want to get. When you're doing your session zero with miniatures, the best thing you can do, take this from years of experience, is you need to lay down the law as to how measurement is actually going to work in the game. This is extremely important because the moment you disallow something to happen, because no one was super clear on how measurement works, that's going to lead to arguments and fights. Anger, hate, suffering, and the dark side. Doesn't matter how old your players are, it always happens. You need to have a clear outline of, okay, this is how we're going to do measurement. This is how we're going to handle measurement. And also, this is how you're going to handle miniatures, especially if you've got delicate, you know, things that you've sculpted yourself. You don't want people just leaning over with their Cheeto fingers and picking it up by the, by the flimsy sword that you took hours and hours to sculpt and breaking it off. That's going to lead to embarrassment, uh, anger, uh, hatred. So how the heck do we move around in an RPG? Well, usually what they use are these kind of grid square maps. This is a dry erase uh, map. You can draw on it and that kind of thing, but it has squares. You can see the squares on it and you can just move your miniatures around that way. Now that's not what I prefer. Since I like to use terrain, I don't want to put squares on all my terrain, all my hills and all that kind of stuff. It's good for dungeons, but you don't want to put it on your hills and outdoor terrain and that kind of thing. So I just use 
measuring sticks. These are just sticks I cut, dowel sticks I cut, and measured out uh, little inch markings on them, which is the same as a square on this map, right? Uh, one inch equals one square. So it's just an easy conversion to move your miniatures on any kind of terrain. You don't really need to use the squares, but a lot of people do like to use them. Now, a funny thing is, in uh, ICRPG, people use a banana. <laughs> That's the recommended movement, uh, is a banana. <laughs> so just depending on the system, you know, other systems have zones where, you know, you, uh, you might be a, a zone or two away and that kind of thing is more abstract. The movements come more abstract. So it just really depends on your system. But uh, for, my, for me and my terrain, I like to use these measuring sticks. How do you measure movement? How do you move the minis? Very important. But then of course, facing. This is the next part of it. How do you handle facing? For instance, is this the droid they were looking for? Is this mini facing them? Or is it facing the other way? You need to figure out a way to determine which way minis are facing. Now, just by looking at these miniatures, you would say, well, these miniatures are facing towards this character and this facing the other way. Now, it depends on the rule system that you're using. But typically what you'd want to say is where the miniature's actual eyes are pointing is where it is actually facing. That's a very simple rule that helps you say that this one is facing the wrong way and these ones are facing the correct way. So you don't have a situation of I will charge into battle and attack him with my back. One misconception or one problem people have with miniatures is like, when do you stop? <laughs> okay, if I start bringing miniatures into the table, then it's terrain, you know, then it's all building out all this stuff and maybe I don't have the time or I don't wanna do that, right? Really, it's up to you, but I think you can still get a lot of value out of miniatures if you just have a battle mat with the miniatures on it. You just draw the, you know, draw the areas on a battle mat and use the miniatures. It still adds a lot to the battle, you know. It's it's that nice thing to look at. So look at this is a combat setup with my 3D terrain, and just look how fantastic this is. It just really draws the players into this miniature world, and everybody's concentrated on the same thing. They're all focused on the same thing. If you doing just, just pure description, it's kind of hard to keep that in your mind. But when you're looking at this, you're actually focused on the terrain, you know, the miniatures look great in it, and it really helps with the tactical aspect of the game. But you know, there are, you know, reasons you may not want to go this far, right? Because, you know, it's money, time, storage, you know, transportation, all that kind of stuff factors in. So before you go down that rabbit hole and decide you're going to do ter full terrain in your game, you know, you need to think about all those factors because, uh, you know, like I say, uh, just using a battle map is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And even, and even having miniatures instead of tokens really adds a lot to your game. But look at this. <laughs> look at the setup. This just takes it to the next level and your players are just going to be so focused on what's going on. I just find that really happens in my games. One of the key things that Scotty and I focus on on our crafting channels is the playability of the terrain. Now this is very, very important. You know, sort of, you know, how, how are your walls detailed or how is your floor was working? You know, how do things get in the way? Um, this is why Scotty's 2.5D system was revolutionary because you got somewhat of a 3D element with walls, which is the way that I do on my current channel. And then you've also got the floor as you see it. Now, both of us are transitioning. He has transitioned into other forms of doing, but keeping the same playability in mind. Now, I remember several comments on one of my videos where I did chairs and I created these little chairs that you could put the mini miniatures on. So you could actually stand the miniature on the chair. Now, of course, in the argument section, you'll always have people that will point out, hey, your, your chair has a five foot square seat. That's ridiculous. In the context of reality, yes, it is ridiculous. But in the context of playability, it is not. Scale is something you have to consider very, very, very carefully. If you put a giant door on the table and say that's just for the miniatures, and the miniatures are this big and the door fits the entire screen, that your scale is, is wrong, okay? Because you, it, optically, when a person's looking at it, they're gonna be, uh, why is the door enormous? Likewise, if the door is microscopic and the miniature is this big, you're going to go, well, my guy's not going to be able to fit through the door. So scale is important. But if you were to measure it and convert it 
So if you measure it and it's, 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 it's five centimeters wide or two inches wide, the door, and you go, well, that's 10 feet wide. That's bigger than the door in reality. You're going to have this sort of mishmash of craziness that's going to start happening in your brain. Scale is important, but also playability. And that's where you basically want to be able to put mini miniatures where miniatures can go. That's why my chairs had a five foot square seat, because I want to be able to put the minis on them and say, there's the guy sitting in the chair. Reality gets thrown out of the window. So the key thing to remember with terrain is that it is actually representative of reality. It is not an exact replica of reality. It doesn't replicate reality. It's just representing reality. That will help you a lot in creating terrain and playing with terrain. I want to tell you a secret that I do. Like, I don't have terrain for everything. Terrain to me is the most important thing when it's about the tactics of the battle, right? It add, it enhances the experience of, of the battle. It makes it look great. It, it helps with the tactics and everything, but you know, you don't have to go beyond that. So what I do is, you know, in my town encounters and that kind of thing, I don't really have many, I don't really use miniatures. If it's just something that's just a role play moment, I don't put a bunch of miniatures down and role play it out. I just, I just role play that out and then, you know, when the ta when the tactic time comes, you know, where there's a battle or something, that's when I put all the terrain and all the miniatures out. So if they go to the town and they're buying stuff, I'm not putting the whole town out. You can do that if you want, but it's a lot of work. And um, for me, I would rather have that time to make the terrain I really need and get the miniatures together I really need for those combat encounters than just every single, you know, role-playing encounter in the game, right? But like I said, that's up to you. And how far down that rabbit hole you want to go is totally up to you. But what I'm trying to tell you is don't be afraid to start because you can always decide how far you wanna go with it. If you just wanna do the battle mat, you're gonna get a lot of value added out of that without any of the terrain or stuff. If you wanna start adding a little bit of terrain on your battle mat, that looks great too. And if you, like I say, if you wanna go full-blown Scotty, you can start doing you know, a, a lot of terrain you know, in your games as far as your tactical combats. So yeah, that's, that's something to think about when you're starting this, you know, adding miniatures, the value added of miniatures to your RPGs, like how far do you want to take it? Don't forget our Kickstarter launches September 1st, where you get the entire North Road campaign. We hope to see you there. And of course, we want to thank our sponsors, which is you, the people who purchase our modules. Now, watch one of these other videos, will you? Or better yet, subscribe and click the bell.